You're listening to Dirty Feet. This is Alison Burns, recording out of the Ottawa Dance Directive Studios here at Arts Court in Ottawa, Ontario. I'm bringing you in the next few episodes, including this one, full coverage of the Dark Horse Dance Projects for the 2016 edition. We're going to be talking to some of the organizers, uh, team members of this showcase this time around. Um, Before we dive into that, I do want to give a full rundown of the credits of the people behind the team. There aren't that many of them, so stay tuned. There's the managing director, who is Nicola Henry. There are two artistic directors, Jocelyn Todd and Marie-Pierre Gilbert, who I'll be speaking with today. There's also two associate directors, Amelia Griffin, who will also be joining me, and Marie-Michelle Darvaux. Uh, there's also a f- team photographer slash videographer, Marianne Duval, and the technical director and lighting designer, Fraser McKinnon. In this episode, we'll be focusing on the project as a whole and talking to different team members. And in the following couple episodes, we're going to be diving into in-depth interviews with the artists presenting work. All of these episodes will be done bilingually. For the most part, the interviews are conducted in English, but about 30% of the content will be in French. The showcases are taking place July 21st and 22nd. Evenings are broken into two sections, one showcase starting at 7 o'clock and the second at 9, and the programs switch each night so that if you want to catch two seven o'clock shows or two nine o'clock shows or two shows in the same evening you can see a variety of work all right let's get into it Right, this is Alison Burns, and I am so pleased to be talking to you uh, from Ottawa, Ontario here, where we're going to be covering for the next couple episodes the Dark Horse Dance Project, which is a showcase happening for two nights only uh, at the Ottawa Dance Directive Space, which is located in Arts Court. This is a showcase featuring Ottawa-based choreographers or choreographers with a connection to the city and really celebrating the talent that's uh, that's associated with Ottawa. Um, so I'm thrilled to, to have the opportunity to relaunch this podcast with this conversation here in Ottawa, my new home. And uh, I'm starting off by speaking with the two artistic directors of the project that's in its second year of uh, presentation, Jocelyn Todd and Marie-Pierre Gilbert. Thank you both so much for joining me today. Thank you. Thanks. You're both uh, graduates from the Ottawa School of Dance program here in the city, which is a post-secondary program. And uh, I would love to start by talking about what inspired this showcase, this uh, Dark Horse project. What inspired the project? Um, I think it was a combination of factors when we, uh, when we first got it kind of in the works. Um, I was actually not living in Ottawa at the time, but I contacted Mary Pierre with this crazy idea and (laughs) she was, she was sweet enough to like get on board. I'd actually contacted quite a few people saying, you know, I really feel like Ottawa doesn't have any of these platforms for artists that happen on a regular basis. They have definitely come up in the past. And as long as I've been around, I haven't seen anything that offers what we're offering at the moment. Um, but that doesn't, I mean, it did happen in the past, but you know, it's, it's a need at the moment. And, uh, so there was the, the drive was to fill a gap in the Ottawa community, as well as for me, I, when I graduated from the school of dance, um, I felt like we were missing something, which was exactly what Dark Horse now is, you know, in my mind. Um, I was, I always wanted to choreograph, so I was looking for ways to get my work seen, and I didn't really see a lot of opportunities for emerging choreographers in the region. Um, So, yeah, that was my inspiration, and I think Mary Pierre understood that completely, as she also, like, left Ottawa after graduating. So, um, so she was right on board and uh and last year it was crazy (laughs) and this year uh it's also crazy but great and we've got a few other um people on board helping us out as well got nicola henry 
Amelia Griffin and Mary Michelle Darvaux. Um, and, uh, and it's just been a, it's just been a great balance of skills. Every, everyone, all of us have like a different thing to give, which is fantastic. And anyways, yeah, it's been really great. For, for for you to now, Jocelyn, live in England and for Marie-Pierre to live in Montreal and to, to both put this, this energy into the showcase and uh, as you've said, like is really about uh, producing opportunities in Ottawa for dancers. H- how does that feel, that paradox of not actually <laughs> being in this city? And- it's really funny. I don't know. I think, I think probably for Marie-Pierre and I, we feel really connected to the Ottawa community. You know, even though neither of us is living here, we feel like um, it really, it really was where we got our first steps in dance, had our first steps in dance. And I, I was very happy to explore different parts of the world. um, But I felt like I would have really loved to have spent a bit of time planting roots here when I first graduated just because it's really important when you graduate from school to have this like community around you that can help you move forward and when you up it was really hard for me to uproot myself from Ottawa go to London and try to make something happen there with nobody in my um nobody like in my roster really of people to talk to and how can I make it work and how do I you know, it just—it was like a complete fresh start, which was great. And there's so much to offer, but it was kind of like, man, this would have been so much simpler in a way if I had if I had had a few years to like get my feet with all the people around me that I knew and were interested in what I was creating and knew my, you know, and I knew them and was interested in them. You know, like it would have been—I feel like it would have been a great opportunity if I had stayed here for a little while, of course really happy I left because I also met my husband there but like (laughs) um but uh yeah I mean it's and at this point like coming from different places I think it's almost like a nice kind of like moment to give back from what we received here Mm -hmm. um and to plant seeds for the future because I don't know you know and I don't know about Mary Pierre but I don't know if I'm ever going to live in Ottawa full-time again but I would love to see the dance community evolve to a place where like you could easily kind of jump in and do things you know have things to apply to and (laughs) and like just throw some work out there you know like a lot of other cities are like that you can there's things to get involved in that's what I would like to see happen in the years to come mais je pense que la danse au final c'est de euh, on bâtit des liens, puis ce qu'on a bâti comme lien à l'école, c'était vraiment euh, unique, comme je pense la plupart des gens dans les écoles de danse euh, le font aussi. Puis je pense pas que ces liens-là peuvent être brisés là, par, euh, par le fait qu'on soit à Montréal ou à Londres, en fait. Je pense que on a toujours le, ma- le, le cœur ici à Ottawa, puis c'est ce qui fait qu'on, qu'on a créé ça. Je pense que Jocelyn, elle a bien, elle a bien dit le besoin qu'il y avait, euh, qu'on a senti ici de, de, d'ouvrir des opportunités puis des possibilités aux danseurs afin qu'ils soient... En, qu'ils, s'ils sont en dehors de la ville, bien, qu'ils reviennent ici, qu'ils reviennent à Ottawa, puis qu'ils créent de la diversité, puis qu'ils créent une halte artistique... Euh, euh, parce que je pense qu'il y a beaucoup de talent à Ottawa, puis je pense pas que c'est le fait qu'elle elle soit à Londres ou moi à Montréal qui fait qu'on on s'implique pas dans notre communauté. Je pense que l'implication est là de, de la part de nous, mais aussi de la part de tous les artistes qui vont aller pour une opportunité à Montréal, mais si l'occasion se présente, ils vont toujours courir pour revenir à Ottawa. Fait que c'est aussi, je pense, le but de Dark Horse, c'est c'est de faire en sorte qu'on peut tous se réunir aussi, même si on est parti un peu partout, on peut tous se réunir ici à Ottawa pour cet événement-là, finalement. In the next couple episodes, we're going to get the opportunity to hear more from the artists themselves who are presenting work in the showcase, but can we talk about them in broad strokes? Like, there's, there's like 20 artists involved in this showcase. Um, how many works are there, and how many people currently live and work in Ottawa, and how many people are imports? What uh, what does that look like? It's a diverse spectrum. <laughs> uh, we have we have about 25 artists total, I think. Um, I would say the majority of which are living in Ottawa. Some of which have just graduated. Some are seasoned 
professionals. It's a funny way to put it, but yes, the, they've been around for ages um, and uh, really know their stuff. And then you've got some people who are producing their first show ever on, you know, and uh, so it's an interesting array of like between emerging and uh, and more established artists. We've got uh, we've got Kier Knight, who used to dance for La 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 Human Steps. We've got Maureen Shea, who used to be a staple in the Ottawa community, and she's now living in the U.S. Um, we have two uh, female duets from Montreal. And then I believe the rest is all Ottawa-based. Uh, well, Kay, Kay Kenny, she's um, half in Kingston and Toronto, but also is a member of the Ottawa Dance Directive. Um, and uh, and then you've got graduates. You've got people who have graduated a few years ago from the School of Dance. So it's like, it's very community feeling, but it's also bringing in other faces that we haven't seen in a while or that are completely new and uh, and that have roots in Ottawa of different kinds. And it is, uh, it's the first tech day here, so we have it a few is. bumps in the background. <laughs> um, so these, these 25 artists are, are uh, some of them collaborators, some of them musicians, and uh, what you've done is you made two programs mm-hmm. with, a, with a, even an artistic intermission. Can, uh, can one of you tell me a bit about the structure of the, of the actual two evenings that we're looking forward to? All the artists perform on both nights, but we have two lineups. So each show is a separate group of artists. There's one at 7 and 9 p.m. both nights. And the uh, 7 p.m. show happens at 9 p.m. on the Friday. And the 9 p.m. show happens at 7, like from the Thursday to the Friday, if that makes sense. So they flip. Um, But if you want to see all the artists, you can come for both shows on either night. And in between the shows, before and after the shows, we also have live music from Megan Jerome, who's a very well-known um, Ottawa-based musician, a soloist, songwriter, etc. Woman of many talents. <laughs> she's got quite a good following here, so um, she's, she's fantastic to, to watch. And um, yeah, so it's going to be a rich evening. It's going to be it's going to be interesting for sure, I think. And uh, we're really excited to see how it works out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's hard for I mean, I think it's funny for us because we're. So I remember once I was talking to someone and I was telling them that I was producing the festival and they were like, oh, my gosh, you're so young for that. And I was like, actually, so many of these festivals are run by young people who who feel like there's a need in their community for this kind of platform for people who are uh, for dancers and and who are emerging to get their work out and like a lot of us know very little about producing at first and you learn the learning curve is huge <laughs> from from even from last year to this year it's just it's unbelievable so um yeah we're thinking it's going to be fantastic and uh, and I'm sure it will be it's just lots and lots of planning and uh, I'm very excited about the the way we've structured the evenings in terms of uh, this year being bigger, better, more, uh, more knowledge behind you, more experience behind you, um, uh, it also says on your site that you have more funders and more collaborators. <laughs> and uh, can you tell us a bit about about that? Is a really exciting element. Oui, ben la première année, on a eu le support de, du Conseil des Arts d'Ottawa qui nous a permis quand même de, de, de créer cette plateforme-là, puis de la faire vivre euh, au, au Centre communautaire euh, du Glebe aussi. Donc, euh, cette année, on a été chercher euh, l'aide de, de plus de support pour offrir plus à nos artistes en termes de résidence, en termes de, 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 de cachet aussi, euh, de leur offrir un, un bon support en général. Donc, euh, il y a la Community Foundation d'Ottawa qui, qui a été d'un support euh, immense. Euh, le Conseil des arts de l'Ontario aussi. Donc, euh, ça, c'est les deux grosses plateformes qui nous ont supportés financièrement. Mais il y a aussi euh, The School of Dance qui nous a aidés euh, pour les studios et plus encore euh, Ottawa Dance Directive ici qui nous permet de, de, ben, de, de, de créer ce, cette opportunité-là avec nous aussi qui nous guide parce que justement, Justin, elle disait, tu sais, euh, on organise, on apprend beaucoup, mais on a aussi des mentors euh, qui, qui nous aident là-dedans. Puis quand on a des questions, on sait vers qui se tourner dans la communauté. Puis euh, ces gens-là sont euh, la plupart de, de l'école, donc de School of Dance ou de Hot, donc euh, Yvonne Coutts, Lana Morton, Sylvie Desrosiers, c'est des gens qui nous ont vraiment euh, guidés quand on avait des, des questions. Euh, 
donc, euh, parce que oui, grandir, on a grandi, mais fois, fois 10, là, je vous c'est depuis l'année passée, euh, il y avait beaucoup d'artistes impliqués, oui, mais euh, on, avait, on avait comme réduit un peu tout ce qui est la technique. On avait, on avait mis ça au minimum parce qu'on n'avait pas, euh, pas beaucoup de temps puis on n'avait pas beaucoup de ressources cette année. On les a, donc on, on a été avec ces gens-là aussi pour voir comment on, on gérait toute, euh, toute l'organisation. Donc, euh, je pense que cette année, ça va être euh, très bien. For, for Marie-Pierre Gilbert and for Jocelyn Todd, who are here with me today, uh, I would uh, love to throw at you my last question, and any last words you have are welcome, but uh, for an audience, a potential audience member, what would you say about this showcase? I mean, obviously, there's going to be a lot of different propositions on stage. Mm -hmm. um, what, what does the Dark Horse Dance Project offer for an audience member? Ben, en fait, je dirais que c'est assez... Euh, c'est quelque chose de très intime à un certain point parce que nous, on offre une carte blanche complète aux artistes. On leur offre 30 heures de création et une carte blanche. On n'impose pas de thème, on n'impose pas de restrictions. Euh, donc, je vous dirais que c'est assez intime parce que ce qui sort de là, c'est vraiment une idée qu'ils ont peut-être depuis longtemps, qu'ils ont le rêve d'essayer. Parce que c'est ça, Dark Horse, c'est une plateforme pour essayer une nouvelle idée que tu as, que tu n'oses pas faire ou que tu n'as peut-être pas les ressources pour tenter. Donc, je pense qu'on va vraiment avoir... On va, Bon, on a, on a des musiciens, on a, on a <rire> je pense qu'on va avoir euh, une variété, mais en plus de ça, euh, ça, ça va être quelque chose d'assez intime qui va faire ressortir chaque chorégraphe, je pense, euh, où ils en sont présentement, ce qu'ils ont envie d'essayer. Donc, c'est super actuel, ça va être hyper dynamique. Euh, puis, euh, voilà. Just What she said. <rire> Just lots and lots of different um, artistic styles, and uh, we also have a bar. <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm just joking. But um, yeah, it's going to be. You, you don't have a bar? Yeah, no, we've got a bar. We've got a bar. Okay. That's great. right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, I think I think Mary Pierre said it all. There's 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 lots to see, and uh, you know. The great thing about short pieces is that, you know, if you're not connecting to one, you're going to connect to the next. And it's, uh, I think it's a great thing for people to see lots and lots of different, um, different points of view. Well, I'm very much looking forward to it. And merde for the rest of the Tech Week and for the shows. Thank you. Thank you so much. Next up, I'm going to be speaking with somebody else on the production team for Dark Horse. Uh, I'm sitting down with Amelia Griffin, who is one of the associate directors on the project. Thank you for joining me, Amelia. Thanks so much for having me. So we've just spoken with Jocelyn and Marie-Pierre about, uh, about the conception of Dark Horse mm -hmm. and last year and what's different this year. And I would like to know uh, how you got involved in the project to start off with and what it is that you do as an associate director. Cool. So I actually was, I presented a choreography of mine feelers um, at Dark Horse last year. So that was sort of my first, uh, first encounter with Dark Horse. I've known Jocelyn and Marie-Pierre um, for quite a long time. Um, so sort of aware that it was building and um, definitely applied. And that ended up um, being really positive for me and giving me other opportunities to showcase sort of the longer or full-length work later on that year. So that was really, really wonderful. Um, and being as, as they're, you know, my dance buds, um, <laughs> I was in conversation with them um, throughout the year and, you know, wanting to know how this was growing and what the next, um, if there was a next one and what the next one was, was going to look like. And... Because I believe so strongly in the strength of this this project, and I really believe that it's a necessary um, a necessary event to happen for the local dance community, especially contemporary dance community um, at this time. I really just wanted to get involved, and you know, if there was something that I could do, then heck, I'll I'll do whatever that thing is. Um, so myself and Marie Michelle Darvaux and Nicola Henry 
um, also joined the team this year. So we were a little team of five. Um, and me as associate director, definitely Jocelyn and Marie-Pierre do the bulk of the work towards producing the show. But it's really been nice to be in this position to liaise a bit with the artists and see what their needs are, you know, tech needs. Um, um, and I'm finding more so my, my role is, is, is more of that, more just supporting whatever's going on or whatever is too much for those ladies to do. Um, and I like to just talk to people about the show and really engage folks in my community um, here in Ottawa or in the communities that I, that I roll with <laughs> in this city. Um, so yeah, continuing and creating conversation and then supporting um, Jocelyn, Marie-Pierre, and the artists. So in this run that we're doing right now, um, setting up a little artist space, you know, making sure everyone has water and food and, and things like that, running around, doing the little extra bits, I just like being a helper, you know? Wonderful. Yeah. And uh, as you mentioned, your, your own uh, ability to kind of use uh, this presentational platform as a starting point for for growing something mm. i'm getting the understanding that other artists have done that too since mm -hmm. the since the initial uh project was presented last year uh, and seeing as you're so implicated in the community are you yeah. able to speak a bit about the other things you've seen develop since the initial project well one really beautiful thing and that we're very very grateful for is um after seeing uh, dark horse last year um, the wonderful ladies who run Ottawa Dance Directive, where we are right now and where the Dark Horse Dance Projects is going to be um, presented this year, Yvonne Kutz and Lana Morton decided to start an event called Floor, P Floor Play. And it's a um, um, excerpts or a full short piece <laughs> um, to go just before the shows that they're um, presenting at, for their series, Series Dans This. And so, for instance, um, two artists that are also dancing here, but presented a, a duet last year, Alia Graham and Annabelle Boissonneau, um, had gone and created a piece in the Yukon. It's absolutely beautiful duet. Um, and so that was programmed, I think, just before Emmanuel Joutte. And so it's often a lot of emerging or young or local choreographers who really get a chance to be paired with um, some pretty heavy <laughs> um, artists and, and create that little opportunity to, to, to show, even if it's a short piece, just before um, something that's part of an already strong series. So there's that. Um, myself was, was more that I had created a dance theater piece and then re really recognize after, and it's because of Dark Horse and the feedback that I got and me watching it from, you know, audience point of view, that I realized I really needed a dramaturg and that I didn't necessarily know where to find that here. And so I ended up talking to my theater friends just about my piece and about the show and one of them just offered. Um, so that was really wonderful. But it meant that um, I then applied and got into... Um, the tactics series here. So tactics is, I'm not going to remember all the words that go with the acronym. I'm really sorry, Bronwyn. But, um, <laughs> um, but they run an independent um, theater series um, for independent artists um, here in Arts Court, but in Arts Court Theater. And so that gave me an opportunity to take my work, which was 10 minutes, and evolve it to 30 minutes, doing a double bill with another artist. Um, so those are sort of two, um, two instances, being either programmed alongside an existing series or having the opportunity to apply and um, present a longer version um, of a piece that may have started because of da Dark Horse. Yeah. I'm trying to rack my brain for other ones, but off the top of my head, those are the two that are coming to me. Uh, yeah. Can you speak at all to the Nuit Blanche development? Yeah, so there's, so I might have a little less information, but I'll tell you what I do know is that um, for the past few years or a couple of years, um, the Ottawa Dance Directive has been hosting um, an event for Nuit Blanche Ottawa, or Ottawa Gatineau, <laughs> um, this region. And um, 
last year, um, the artists, some of the artists that uh, presented at Dark Horse were invited to fill the space here at uh, Ottawa Dance Directive Arts Court and just sort of continue those line of thoughts. But, you know, what a great place to do it. There's, there's lots of little nooks and crannies here. And on the other side of things, too, it gets, you know, Nuit Blanche, is, people love Nuit Blanche, right? And so people are milling about an arts court that may not have been here, um, and it really brings people into the space. Um, and then also upstairs to the Ottawa Dance Directive and seeing these pieces kind of in, in very strange spaces and, and exploring this space and being aware of this space. So I think it's kind of a mutually beneficial um, thing that happened and that the artists were able to continue their work and continue working together and continue to present, but also um, pr an, an opportunity to promote not just those artists, but also the, the um, Ottawa Dance Directive, which, if in case you're not from Ottawa <laughs> or not super aware of Ottawa, Ottawa Dance Directive is really our, our, our hub of contemporary community. Um, definitely we have the School of Dance um, that the majority of folks involved in, um, either on the production side or on the artist side, the majority of folks have graduated or at least gone to the School of Dance. Um, and so those sort of two spaces are really where we convene and, and it's nice to be able to invite people in here and, uh, you know, showcase local, local people and local artists. Wonderful. I've heard nothing but, but positive things about the, the creation of this showcase opportunity. Um, do you have any, uh, either insights into what's happening in the future of Dark Horse or just dreams about the mm. future of the project? Mm -hmm. Well, I think the dreams lie in, um, you know, whether we keep, whether we keep going in the way that we're going, which is, you know, obviously two days of many, many shows <laughs> and two bills that sort of switch from, from, from one night to the other. Um, cause it's a really good format and people really seem to enjoy it. Um, or to go towards being nonprofit organization and adding on a show, um, sort of half, you know, at the halfway mark from, from these ones, um, through the year, through the year. Yeah, and so, um, and that for me, in, in my little world of dreams and hopes and loves, um, that, you know, maybe a few pieces from the Dark Horse could, could have an opportunity to develop their pieces further and create longer works um, to be presented, um, uh, you know, in, in like September or October in response to this sort of June, July uh, showcase. Um, I recognize that this has been, you know, really quenching a thirst um, for a community event um, and for an event that, that brings people into an awareness of what's happening here in Ottawa. And so my dreams and hopes lie within wanting to also bring this to different spaces in Ottawa and different theaters and give a chance for... Um, us to fill different spaces and not just the spaces that we commonly use already. Um, and having, you know, this mishmash of local artists, but also, you know, like there's, there's Marie-France, uh, Jacques, Julie Timchuk, and Elise Bergeron, um, both who went to the School of Dance but didn't complete the program. And so, you know, what are our connections outside of Ottawa that also feedback loop here um, to continue this conversation about how great Ottawa is, because it really is, um, outside of the walls of Ottawa, but really to en entice people here and keep growing this community. And from my side of things, I really recognize that um, once you come out of school here, there are a few opportunities um, in those sort of emerging years to present uh, work or to be a part of work. And so this is obviously in response to a lot of that. Um, but again, coming back to the to the big hopes and dreams and future things, um, you always want more. You know, if people are responding positively, we well, you want to get more opportunity. And um, yeah, I think I think we're we're still discovering. You know, we're in our second year, so we're still discovering just how necessary this is and what that means and and how that places us and what that means for the future and whatnot. So there's still a lot of brainstorming to be done. Yeah. And being almost all the way through tech thus far, uh, mm. can you tell us anything about 
something you've noticed about the showcase in general? Any themes at play? Mm -hmm. Any through lines? Any huge contradictions? Any comments? Yeah. So, I mean, for the actual shows, I'm prop lady. Woo! That's my other job. Um, And so it's interesting to be on the prop side of things and notice that there's an awful lot of fabric of different sorts being used. And it's so funny when these shows happen, you know, and there's sort of a... Um, creating everyone all at the same time, even if they're not talking. And there's just those things that happen, like many people using a similar kind of prop. So I've noticed there's about three people using different kinds of fabric in different ways, each very haunting and beautiful. Um, I'm really also aware of how people are using the lights as well. I'm seeing a lot of blue. A lot of blue, a lot of cool tones. Um, And I'm wondering, because we haven't done the tech in order, I'm wondering from piece to piece, kind of, you know, how's the mood going to go? I'm really looking forward to the dress rehearsal to really get a sense of, you know, where do, what's the journey of all of these very different, uh, very different pieces? And I think another thing to really note is that while we're one community and a lot of um, folks have graduated from the same space, One of the strengths of the School of Dance program is really tapping into yourself, your individuality and your voice. And I feel like that's really supported through the training. But then you see it on stage here, like everyone's piece is is quite different. Um, Even though there's those through lines of fabric and whatnot. But yeah, I'm really loving seeing these people that I already know, but being so them you know, and really bringing their whole selves to their piece and, you know, a, a piece of them and seeing that juxtaposed um, on stage is, is just beautiful, you know? So that's sort of what I have to say. <laughs> Great. Any last words? Follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Twitter is at Dark Horse Ottawa and Facebook is Dark Horse Dance Projects because part of this is creating conversation and integration and awareness of what's happening here in Ottawa and wanting to to share that with the rest of Canada and the rest of the world. Um, I feel very satisfied, <laughs> satisfied and honored um, to be a part of this and that this is happening. Um, having been dancing in Ottawa, um, for 10 years um it's just it's like like i said earlier it quenches a thirst it's such a fresh like full glass of water um and i really just encourage people to keep aware of this project and and keep it in your minds and keep it in your hearts and um yeah i applaud jocelyn and marie pierre to the nth degree i think it was just such a smart idea and obviously I want to stay involved in supporting them and in whatever way they need so I'm super proud of Ottawa excellent thank you I've been speaking with Amelia Griffin who's been uh, talking about the Dark Horse Dance Project as she is an associate director on the team That concludes this episode of Dirty Feet. I'm Alison Burns. Tune in next week for more coverage of the Dark Horse Dance projects. Thank you very much to the team for giving me full access to cover the project this year. And also thank you to Paula Flalo and the No More Radio Network for support. I'm going to leave you with a preview of the next upcoming episode. Um, Dark Horse is like a a big family for me. It's a lot of people who have come from the school of dance and I've watched grow or um, they've inspired me to grow as artists as well, so. And I really enjoy having the audience sink in to how time passes in different ways. Sometimes, we hardly notice it's passing because there is so much happening or it's very, you know, there's a lot of action. Sometimes it feels like it's moving extremely slowly. Um, And so in this piece, we have long moments of um, 
smaller actions, if you like, that are, I would say, even more human than theatrical. And we also have moments of bursts of intensity. Um, Um, I think, like, generally in terms of creating the movement-wise, um, with three brains, three choreographers, three styles of moving, um, we are pretty accepting of, like, each other's movements. I feel like we accepted more movements than we declined <laughs> from each other, and that's actually how we came up with such a large movement bank, 